let's talk about, uh, you spend a lot of your time thinking about time. Let's set the stage, let's turn back the clock a little bit, uh, set the scene for us and explain how Einstein decided to get involved with concepts of time. Right, like, so like all of us, Einstein lay awake at night as a teenager wrestling with the problem, you know, what is time? And my, my favorite definition is time is just one damn thing after another. <laughs> uh, but uh, he, he came to realize that there was a conflict, a deep conflict in physics, and we're talking about the turn of the 20th century. Mm -hmm. Deep conflict in physics uh, between two things, one of which is very familiar. So you must have had the experience of sitting in a railway carriage and you think, oh, we're, we're moving off, and it's the train on the parallel track going the other way. Uh, that's often called the principle of relativity, that uniform motion is relative. Uh, you're familiar with it as well. I don't know if you ever had this experience. A lot of people are afraid of flying. Uh, I do a lot of flying, so I'm, I'm not afraid. But the one thing that happens to me almost inevitably, as the plane taxis out to take off, I fall asleep. It just happens almost every time. So then when I wake up, I have no idea whether we're airborne or still on the runway. And that's because smooth flight, you can't tell. You can drink your coffee and right. uh, you know, play marbles or whatever, same laws of physics. So that's been known since the time of Galileo, that the laws and mechanics are uh, relative. There's no, the, it, it, you can talk about my speed relative to you, but right. nobody's got an absolute speed. So that was already known. Um, but this was in conflict with what had been discovered in the 19th century about uh, the way that light behaves. So light's uh, an electromagnetic wave, and the equations for electromagnetism were all worked out in the 1850s by James Clerk Maxwell. And from the mathematics of those equations, well, I'm not going to go into that, but from the mathematics of those equations, it was clear that the speed of light is supposed to be a, f a fixed number, a constant. Well, how can you reconcile the relativity of motion with a constant speed of light? Because what happens if you chase after yeah. a light beam? Can you overtake the light? Right, that's what he was uh, wondering. Yeah, right. well, image, or if, it's, what if I chase after this? If it's coming at you, surely you'll encounter the light at a higher speed than if you're dashing away from it. And he realized these two pillars of physics couldn't both be correct. And the only way to reconcile them was to do something funny with time and space as well, as it happens. We're going to just talk about time. Basically, uh, in daily life, we think that time and space are just sort of there, right. an arena in which the great drama of nature is acted out. But what Einstein said is, no, that, the, these, uh, so that space and time are part of the cast. They're part of nature, just like matter can be changed manipulated, so space and time can be changed or manipulated. It's often called warping time or time dilation. So he had this idea that your time and my time might not be the same if we're moving differently. Uh, and, uh, uh, well, I can demonstrate it right away. That yeah. we, we, can, we can introduce a time difference just by me walking up and down. That's all it takes. Now, you might say, but that must be a trivial amount. It's true, but if I took a a plane, as I'm going to on, Lon uh, on Monday, to London, and then come back again and we compare your clock and my clock, if they're good clocks, we see there's a difference, because we've been moving differently. Wow. Wow. And then just the movement changes the clock. Just the movement. But because light is the, the key to this, uh, to get a really big time warp, you need to move it close to the speed of light. And in effect, what you are doing if you zoom off at close to the speed of light is you are leaping into the future quicker. So it's a sort of time travel wow. into the future. It means you can get to a future event faster. So you fancy living to the year 3000 or here on Earth. Well, you can either do it the slow way and sit here for a thousand years or you zoom off close to the speed of light and get to the year 3000 in, say, one year. Right. So what it means is that the interval of time between two fixed events can depend on the way you move. So mm. time is not absolute, it's relative, as we mm. say. He also realized that gravity does funny things to time. Time, we're going to get into this later, runs, and I don't think time runs at all, but I'll use the words for now. Time runs a little bit faster up on the roof than it does in the basement. Once again, this is a measurable effect. We're going to talk later on how you measure these effects. Mm. So in other words, you know, time is something that depends on how you're moving and what your situation is. Mm.